to my presentation. Today I want to show you some new features that Laravel got to offer and it's all about Folio and Vault. And if you never heard something about it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you today everything I know about it. And for that reason, I built a simple application. Here, as you can see, foliovault.test. It's a pretty unique name, I know. And we're going to just, oh, let me change this here. Close that. And we're going to start with it. So normally, when you have a Laravel application, you have to define all your routes in the routes directory here and then go to your web file. But we are handling now this um, page without configuring any routes. So how is this actually possible? And it's possible because we are using Folio. And Folio is a way how we can actually um, how we can actually use um, file-based routing with Laravel. So as you can see, we have here a file that's called index.blade.php, and when we go at it, it will say, "Hey Basel." If you refresh it, it's say it's again. So you will see here we are on the page. If you go and make a new page, maybe like Basel.blade, and we say, "Hey Basel" again, and we visit the file name now Basel. As you can see, because the name is Basel, so we have a new route as well. And so it's an easy way we can make file-based routing, as you are maybe used from Nux.js or from Next.js, they already have included that, but now we can do it as well with Laravel. And the cool thing is, we can even do more complex stuff. So let me do like users route, and let me show you all the users from the system. So let's go and fetch all the users from the database, um, and just display the name of them. Um, user name. Okay, I can type. And as you can see, we have now changed the route. It's called users. And voila, we have all the users here in our system. We have my name, we have Henning, Sandro, and I hope everyone on this list is here. And yeah, that's easy way how we can do that. And when we want something more dynamic, so let's do a route, maybe it goes to users. How, we, how can we actually do that if you want something like that? So when we do it like here, um, we can press now on this route, as you can see in the bottom, it will go to user slash one, but when we go there, it does not find anything. So the natural way is we can create a file, user slash one dot blade dot php and say h1, hey there, and now it works. But what happens if you go back and go maybe to handing his page? He's with the idea of two. Oh man, this does not work. So do we have to create a page for two? No, we don't have to. We can use a simple syntax like actually React and Nux is also using. We can use a square brackets and press ID inside it. Yeah. And when we do that, we can say, hey, and just grab the ID here. So let me show you. So we have hey two. And yeah, it's awesome <laughs> that uh, this automatically happening. So we have wildcards that we can use. And it's already working with deep nested stuff. You can nest as many stuff you want, go down. And the nice part is we can even use this now to open our PHP tag as we, everyone is used to do it. So maybe we grab um, the user here. And then we can just get the username. And so, hey, Sandro, it's working. When we go to Henning's page, it's also working and it's great. But wouldn't it be nice that we can get route model binding that we have with Laravel also? But it's also possible. We have just to change the ID to user. So it got to match the model name. So when we got user, we got here the user so we can get rid of everything here, of these lines. And this still works, so we can even use route model binding and it magically just fetches the data from the database and you can work with it in your view. Okay, but what's about um, routes that are named? So I actually want to use here something like, let me show it. Ooh. I want to do something like this. I want to go to the user show route and it sh should show me the user so we can make it a bit more dynamic. Okay, let's see if this is working. 
So if you use that, it will say us, ah, we don't have a user.show route. So what's happening? How can we actually achieve this? So when we look inside our terminal and do folio list, it will show us all available routes that we have. And we have now three routes. We have one for our index page, the slash, then users, and the users route with a, with a wildcard. But how can we do that? That this even accepts that we have a name parameter. And things like that is also possible. We just have a global function from Folio that's called name, and we can just call this user show. And if you change this, we no longer have the error message. We can now name our routes as well and use it in our system. So everything works as intended. So we can now go here, go there, and that's cool. And everything that we are using before, before we used um, the old way of writing it or the other way, well, it's not the old way, it's still the way you can use it, but everything we can use as well. So let me show you how we can use like middlewares. So when we have like a secret page here and we want to say only authenticated users can visit this page. Very long word or sentence. And when we go to secret, we will see I'm an unauthenticated user, but I still can visit this. How can we actually achieve that, that um, a middleware does protect us here? And the nice part is we already have a global function from Folio that's called middleware. We can just call the auth function. And when we call this, now an error is thrown, don't worry. But we will see it actually does something different. It says, hey, the route login is not defined because now the middleware to authenticate is actually hitting here. And we can say you shall not pass if you do that you will see that actually the middleware is working. So we can use um, different middlewares on every page that we want. Okay, and everything is possible with Folio that we are used with the normal way how we did a routing as well. Okay, so far, any questions? Because it's pretty basic, file-based routing, everything works. Any questions? No, I think nobody is impressed with that. So let's go on with the next part. Because Folio does work really great with LiveWire. So to make your page interactive. So when you're using LiveWire, you can make your uh, page dynamic without writing any JavaScript. So let me show you an example how, what I mean with that. So when we go here, we have um, Hey Basel. And now I want to add a counter. So we have a counter that has a button and maybe an H2 tag. Gonna press here. And let's go to the page back. And here we have a counter. And I want to press now the button and increase the count. How can we actually do that? We can use LiveWire for that. So let's go with it. Make LiveWire and let's do a counter component. And as you can see, we have now two files. One the counter, the class for the counter, and one the view, the counter.blade. So let's look inside what's actually, what did uh, LiveWire create for us? So when we go here, we have a simple counter and the only thing that's doing is rendering something. Okay, and here under resources, we have the view as well corresponding. So we have two files generated and when we go with like fire emojis or stuff like that, we want to actually output this. So when we go back to our file and do something like live wire counter and refresh this page, we will see now here the fire emoji. But Still, it's not very dynamic. Nothing is happening. So let me show you how we can do that. Let me first open the counter file and on beneath, I'm going to show the view, paste everything here inside. And the first thing we got to do is adding a property. We need an integer or something like that to store the count. So when we go to count here and put it out here, we have a reference here to this attribute and we will see in zero, oh, I wanted to do it here on the bottom. Sorry about that, here on the bottom. And when we do maybe something like 100, we will see, ah, it's kind of reactive already. But we need now to do a function to increase the count. So let me show you how we can do that. So let's do an increment function here and just count it up. And the next part is because currently we don't tell, hey, when should this function be called? And we want to call it when we click on the button. So let's click here, increment, and let's see if it's working. 
So when we click now here on this button, it should increment. And we did now an in interactive thing without writing any JavaScript. And, but LiveWire with version 2 can already do that. So what's the fuss about Vault? Let me show you what Vault is all about. We can just copy everything here outside, delete the whole class here. We don't need that. Now we just copy it here under beneath. Get rid of the namespace, use statement. We need to make an anonymous class, so we're gonna use new class. Change this to a LiveWire Vault component this time and get rid of the render function. And when we save that and refresh the page, now let's see what's happening when we click the plus button. Voila, it's still working. And that's the power of Vault. We can write now single file components in PHP um, that we were used to do like in React or with Vue. Uh, we can do now the same thing with LiveWire and with Blade. And I think that's a really nice way to do it. And you can even use something like composables or hooks here. So let me show you that. So we, we have here like a state function and we can just do count zero here. Okay, get rid of this one. Then we can define a variable with a function in it and say it should increase the count. So we can get rid of this function. And now the anonymous class is completely empty. So we can get rid of the anonymous class. Let's import everything. Okay, this is wrong. Let's do it like that. And as you can see, we have now the same behavior as before, but we did it like a different API. Let's call it like that. It still works the same everything. When we click here on the plus button, it's still gonna increase the counter. And we have something very dynamic and everything is in a single file. Because we can now get rid of this counter blade file here as well. And, ooh. okay, I got rid of the wrong file. <laughs> um, ooh, how can I restore it? Wait, don't worry, I can get it working again. Ooh. I have a backup. I deleted the wrong file, so. Let me show. Ah, yeah, I got it here. Okay, now we are back here. Mm. Okay, this was the next step I wanted to show you. <laughs> okay, don't worry. Now we could actually get rid of the counter file that I had before. Yeah, I had this one. So here, this was the component. But sometimes we have um, components that are not reusable. We want us to use it in one place. So we can actually get um use of the vault directive. So when we go here, I can just copy this out, paste it here, and we can write actually the counter, the markup, everything here inside and use just the vault directive. And as you can see here on the bottom, we still have the two functions. And when we go back and refresh this, this still works. And so we can use like, what's called like anonymous components inside our uh, views. And I think that's a real nice way how we can actually now write our applications because when I first used Tailwind, I thought it's a really bad choice to use Tailwind, but it was never a um, bad practice actually because you're writing your applications to be more maintainable. And that's now the same thing because things that go together, you can write now in the same file. Like the logic from this counter, I don't need to have a separate class or anything different. I can just put it in this single file where everything belongs. And if I don't need this anymore, I can just delete everything from this file. It's gone. And I don't have to worry if somewhere is still a class that's not used anymore somewhere or the viewer, did I miss it or anything. And I know this feature is gone. It's not used any, anywhere else and I'm done with it. Okay. Yeah, and that's the whole power of Laravel Vault. Uh, LiveWire world. So far, any questions? Okay, let's get to a more exciting feature because pressing a button and increasing the counter is boring. So I have something prepared here for you. Um, pages directory here. Let me copy it. Um, 
I've read an article and in this article they did show the power how we can actually use um, LiveWire's new SPA mode with Volt and everything with Folio. So we have here two, now two pages, one is the index page and one that's showing the episode numbers. So as you can see we have here episodes and then we click here, we are going to an episodes page. So it's 195, we can go back and go here and so on so. And normally when you would do that, there was actually no way how you can achieve something like an audio player here on the bottom. As you can see the audio player is running. But when we go to a different page, you will see it's still running. It's not full page reloading. Because normally when you're writing an application and doing the normal href, it's full page reloading a page. And you will think, yeah, Nuxt and Next already got it. Yeah, I know, but Blade doesn't have it. <laughs> so that's like a new way how you can do the stuff. And you, so you can stay um, like in your PHP world without going to the JavaScript world. And let me show you how actually this works. Um, we have here an index file. And as you can see, it's just a big vault component. It doesn't have anything else, just a vault component and doing some stuff here back. But the nice part here is what you have here, we have an anchor tag. And the only thing that we got to do is um, adding a new attribute that's called via navigate. And that's whole, all the magic that's to it. And now LiveWire already knows what it got to do now with this link. Because now it knows, ah, I'm not doing it. When I'm clicking on it, I'm not loading the whole page. I'm just fetching the page and changing stuff that's required. And how is it doing? We have to check the layout file. So here in the layout file, let's close the head part. As you can see, we have three parts. One part is the logo. And that's the logo is here on the top. Then we have like the main part that's listing like everything in the center. And then we have the episode player. As you can see in the bottom, it's still running. It's on one minute 40 now. And but the nice part is we can just add now a tag that's called persist. And persist is the tag that means, hey, please do not change this part. This part should be like static and should not change on um, ne or from navigating from one page to another. So when we navigate here to this page, it's a complete different page as you can see. We are now here, but LiveWire is so smart that it can only change the stuff that's required to change. And that's like, um, in my mind, a really cool feature that LiveWire now got to offer to write now like modern, really interactive um, web applications. Yep. So far, do you have any questions to the new SPA mode from LiveWire? Okay, no questions. Great. Um, and that's uh, like the three things I wanted to show you today. Okay, let me show you. Also, one was the folio package. It's like an optional package. You don't have to use it. But when you're using LiveWire, I would strongly recommend to use it. Because when you're using it together with Laravel Vault, it's like match made from heaven. So both work very great together. Because normally you have to write, go to the, your web file, uh, define a route there. Then you have a controller. The controller is returning a view and doing, you need to write like, you have to go to three or four different files just to do a single route. And the same goes with Vault. You have to create like a class, you have to create your view, and now you can just experiment or do stuff, get really your stuff done very fast without ever, how can I say, without ever leaving a single file. You, everything that's concerned together will stay in the file. And when you go here to the navigate part, you can read everything around how the persisting elements across pages works. So if you know maybe from Rails Turbo Links, it's like the same approach because Turbo Links is also just changing the parts that are required on the page. Okay. Yeah. And after my talk, I will upload everything here. There, there's a nice readme where you can um, look at everything up, like the documentation, the links where you can find all the stuff and the recording will be also there. And yeah, if you enjoyed it, you can follow me on Twitter, Ruslan Steiger. Uh, or X, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's X, yeah. Uh, I hope I could show you one or two new things. And yeah, thank you for your time.